Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us again to, for another episode of Interviews. For those of you who were wondering where I'd gotten to, um, I've moved into a new home this year, and I wanted to get into the new space and just make sure that all my technology was up and running properly before I started with this interview series again. So I apologize if you've been missing the videos, uh, and I am finally back on the horse. And here we are with our first episode in the 2021 series, Better Late Than Never. And today I'm very excited because we are talking to Karen Boerta again. And um, my thinking this year in 2021 is to take us back and revisit some of the people that I interviewed last year so that you can see how they've progressed, how they've changed. Um, and you can also hear maybe if they mentioned in a previous video about something that worked that they were going to try out. Now you can hear how it worked, whether it worked or not, um, and what the outcomes of some of those choices and decisions were. So uh, I hope you're going to enjoy the series uh, this year in 2021 and over to Karen. Karen, perhaps you could just start with a, a recap of who you are and what you do for people who are watching who missed uh, last year's episode. Of course. Hi, Mel. Hi, everybody. So I'm Karen Boetzer. I own and run Blurb Magic. Um, it's a social media agency. So traditionally, when I started, I was running social media for small businesses. Now I've added to the stable where I run social media. I also run adverts for some companies. Some of them I do their social media as well as the adverts, others only the advertising. And then I also do social media training for small businesses. Okay. So I think perhaps it might be worth us having a conversation because um, so a couple of years ago, social media was just this like big kind of a group term. And anybody who worked in, in any field just got lumped in there. But now as time progresses and the industry seems to be becoming more specialized, um, there seem to be more of these terms popping up. And so, for example, one of them is community manager. Mm. So perhaps you could just explain for people who are watching what all these different aspects of social networking look like and what the service providers in that space look like. Because I think also perhaps what tends to happen is an, an entrepreneur will go to a service provider and say, I need this from you, assuming that that's within what they do, mm. and yet it's mm. not. Correct. So I think, you know, social media often is considered anything that's online. You know, you would even lump WhatsApp into social media. Mm. Although, you know, is it a social platform? Is it becoming more of a social platform? It wasn't traditionally. So you are right. Um, social media as a board term is incredibly big. And you'll mm. find that most people will size in one or two platforms, uh, maybe three. And then within that, as you've mentioned, often they will specialize in parts of what goes on in those platforms. So let's bring up the community managers. So community managers generally used for a group, so Facebook groups. So where you have caused, uh, created a community of like-minded people who are all interested in a similar thing, or it could be people following just a large corporate group. And those people will manage literally whatever goes on in that group. So they will be allowing people in, they will be seeing which members come in, they will be monitoring everything that happens within the group. They'll make sure that there's conversations happening and they keep the community and the social side of social media going. So that would be a community manager, for instance. Um, depending on the size of the group, depends on whether that person would might only be a community manager for one or, or more groups, or if they would have other things that they have in their stable. Um, you also get people who specialize just in Facebook ads. And Facebook ads, once again, incorporates more than just Facebook. You know, Facebook now is often used as a term for more than Facebook. It's everything that falls under the same stable as Facebook, which is your Instagram and your WhatsApp. And Facebook also puts out adverts on other platforms. Mm. So, you know, it sounds like such an easy thing and people used to say, okay, I'm just going to boost a post. Mm. And yet it's become so much more complicated. 
you know, there's things like pixels, which you say pixel to half the half the world, and they're like, they don't know what you're talking about. You know, you've got to verify your um, your domain. You've got to verify your business. There's all sorts of things in the background before you can even just start specializing and targeting your clients and finding the right people and, and putting the right kind of adverts in front of the right people. Mm-hmm. So there's you only specialize in the advertising side. Mm-hmm. You know, also some people will do which is something that I do is you'll do your your Facebook advertising as well as your Google ads. Okay. You know, because one is inbound ad- advertising where people are actually searching for you and the other one is outbound where you are going and putting yourself in front of people who could possibly want your product. You're almost creating a, a need for your products. Mm. So mm. that's another side of it. And then obviously there is just your social media management, which is you making sure and ensuring that, that clients and yourself have got a presence organically online. And okay. that's just making sure okay. that you are constantly being seen, you know, okay. and that people can find you if they look for you. So, the, I mean, as I said, you know, you can go into the different platforms with your links and then your Twitter and your TikTok and the whole work. There's so many different things. So always ask where people specialize and don't assume. Okay. Okay. That's great information. That's great information. I think the, I think it's it's like, you know, when I was a kid, I used to think lawyers all did the same thing or doctors all exactly. did the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, and they're very broad and very specialized fields these days. They really and, are. Yes. I think the older the internet gets, the more uh, that's going to become the case. Sure. So, uh, Karen, I, we could talk all day about social networks and stuff. Um, and what I'd really like to talk about today is how has your business shifted and grown since last year? How, how have you pivoted it? Um, what are you doing differently to the last time that we spoke? All right, so COVID happened, <laughs> which <laughs> happens to everybody. So it was, it was a big, it had a big impact on my business. Um, my clients have traditionally been very small businesses. I've always had a passion to help entrepreneurs people are starting out, people with maximum maybe 10 employees and things, you know, I, I love helping people I know can actually really use the help. And most of them got knocked by this, you know, so my clients went from a really good amount to basically nothing. And I had to relook at everything and just go, okay, how can I still help, help myself, obviously financially, but also help where people are really needing it. And this is where I decided to do online training Mm-hmm. where I teach people to manage their own social media and with that yes so with that um, I basically look at what they've got in place we go and we do the customer avatar and we find out where do their clients hang out and with that we see and I, this is why I do it one-on-one so I can really help them where they are needing help and I teach them very top level to manage their own social accounts efficiently and effectively because they don't have time. They yes. don't have money. But there are so many ways that you can schedule posts, that you can make sure that you're in front of the right people at the right time, that they can utilize themselves. So that's become a bit of a passion project for me. Um, I have consequently also picked up a number of retainer clients where I'm still doing their, their social media where I manage for them. Um, and then I've also started working on the advertising things side of things. Okay. So I have branched out and, and grown and I'm absolutely loving it. So last year when I spoke to you, did you think you would grow in, in the year that followed? I think, um, I guess, because growth is always where you want to go. So um, I like growing. I, I never like to just sit and do the same thing. You know, I think I'm a typical Gemini and that I need to constantly be busy and doing different things. So yes. I would have I would have grown regardless had it thought I'd grown this way. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. You know, and I've also had to find ways of growing because it hasn't just been automatic, you know, and also with a lot of people losing their jobs, the first place that people go, how do I work online? How do I make money from home? They suddenly become a social media manager. Yes. So yes. The markets became flooded very quickly with very cheap offerings of people who didn't really know what they were doing. Yes. <laughs> If you don't, if you don't know what they're meant to be doing, you don't know that they don't know, you yes. know, and yes. because of everybody's situation. So you know, it's, and it's been it's been a challenge to find the niche again. Do you feel that it's changing now? Um, I think people are becoming a little bit wiser, and people are also realizing that 
there's different things you need to do. What was relevant last year isn't relevant this year. Mm. You know, everything is changing on the back end of all these social platforms. Mm. So you've got to, you can't just, you know, recycle what you did last year. You can't, you can't just the person who did a course last year and has done nothing else. Yes. It's not going to be relevant today. Yes. yes. You know, you've got to stay ahead of the game. Um, you know, I'm always on all the international forums. I'm learning, constantly learning from international people, et cetera, because we aren't that far behind them. Yes. And if you're not on top of it, you do lose out, you know. And, and yeah, there's, there's been a lot of shifting. And as long as you stay on top of it, I think it's, it's great for the industry. I think it's also moving so fast that in six months you can actually fall behind if you if you don't pay attention. Well, absolutely, yes, definitely, definitely, and and yeah, you have to stay ahead of the game, and you have to also look at what could possibly happen. Um, I don't know. I'm sure people have heard about the whole IS14 upgrade. You know, the whole Apple thing, and where you can't target people the same way anymore. And there's there's a lot of nervousness about it. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, it's going to destroy the industry and you're not going to be able to advertise. It's just different. And there's ways around it. And um, Facebook itself has put things into place to work around it. But if you mm -hmm. don't know what those are and you don't know how to use them to your advantage, you're going to miss out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really, really important to make sure that whoever you're speaking to just stays away and on top of what's going on. Yes. Yes. So, so your customers who are coming to you now for training, who are they typically? So they are a, a big variety and from all over the place, which is great, you know, because initially I started doing, beg your pardon? International? Um, I've done international, not okay. through myself, through somebody I'm working with on another side of things, but um Sounds almost international when you hear the small town some of them are coming from. <laughs> it's been literally all around the country. I've had people from all over the place and very, very professions and small to larger businesses, um, right through from travel to, you know, these sort of network marketing schemes to lodges to all sorts of things. Um, and it's just people wanting to know how to get the best out of what they've already got in place. And it's, and it's incredible to see, because obviously then I start following them and I can just see the difference it makes. And they always come back and just say, wow. And the, the truth is I'm not teaching them that much. You know, a lot of these people are really, they, they're quite familiar with what to do, but they just don't have the confidence mm. or they just don't know the little tweaks. You know, there's always little things that when you're working with it all the time, you know, we sort of I take the advantage. Sorry, love the dogs. But um, they just need to be told and shown and just help give them a little push and they start flourishing. And that's, that's my advice, you know. So, yeah. so do you think perhaps, because I know for me, I, I work online and I work with social network stuff all the time. And, and, mm -hmm. For me, what often happens is there's just so much you can do. It's mm. very, very difficult to narrow down what you should be doing. Uh, do you have a process for for your customers where you where you how, how do you help them figure out where they should be focusing? Exactly that. I, I get them to narrow it down and to see what is it you're doing, mm. what where are your clients and what your clients need. You know, we've got to learn to switch it around from this is me and this is what I do mm. to this is you and this is what you need and how yes. can I solve your problem. Yes. And once you start focusing from a customer's point of view yes. and you basically, everything you do is to help them and to feed them, yes. you, can, you can give them what they need, yes. you know, and for every single customer, this is different. Yes. You know, so I find that it's, it's all works with customer avatar, it works with the customer's personality, yes. you know, because it's all about humanizing your brand, yes. where their comfort levels are. So we do, we break it down. Okay. And then, you know, if things change along the way. I also say, okay, when you're growing, this is what you can do. Or when you're more comfortable in front of the camera and you want to do lives, <laughs> practice on me, you know, and then we'll take it from there. 
Yeah. So I do, you know, I, I, I do always leave the door open for them so that they know where to from here. Yes. And they yes. can also, and I'm available when they're ready, you yes. know, so we don't, we try not to overwhelm. We try and we literally, I try and bring it in and we, we give them sort of a schedule. This is what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And then when you are ready, these are the next steps to take. Yes. Yes. So just to give some context to those of you who are watching, um, Karen today agreed to support my process with my tech. Um, I was having some challenges with my camera and um, my camera kept dropping me every time I had an appointment with someone. So today she talked me off my ledge firstly, gave me some extra ideas about where I could go and look and toggle some more switches and then made herself available to me in a very generous way. Um, to just test drive whether my camera was working properly or not before I let somebody else down who I'd made an appointment with. So thank you so much for your generosity today. It was absolutely and awesome. Your pleasure. And, and your pleasure. And I'm delighted to hear about your progress. So am I. Thank you so much for taking me on, giving me a bit of a voice. Yes. And I think if I give people just one, one bit of advice, it's just be present. You know what's more than ever, and we've heard this for a long time, but more than ever, it really is about being human. Yes. You know, yes. people deal with people. So to put yourself out there, yes. you know, open up and let people see who you are and what you do, and they'll come to you. You know, attract your tribe. <laughs> so that's, that's such an awesome message to leave us with. Thank, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your wisdom with pleasure. us again today. Thank you so much, and good luck with the camera. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>